I've just always I've always loved athletics um, because I was a very hyperactive child. I just used to love running around. I was ranked number one in the country for a bit in the high jump when I was a, a young boy. Went off to university, ended up breaking 7,000 points in my second year of university, and then just, just kept plugging away with it, really. Coming into the last year, 2022, I came out of that indoor season feeling like I was in really, really good shape. Did a decathlon in Bedford, and then just everything in that decathlon just went pretty perfectly, to be honest. And then, yeah, got the qualifying standard. But I remember lying in bed the night before the competition going, running through the comp my head going, there's no way I could possibly score the qualifying standard. And I scored seven eight four three and then after the high jump i just thought oh, actually i'm in in the hunt now so i've just got to keep it going i've managed to set myself my own goals this year um i haven't met as many of them as i'd have liked my main one was to get over eight thousand points in the decathlon and still feel like i could do with a good competition but i just don't think it was the the season for me to do it i'll make excuses for it it's just sometimes um the competitions don't go your way and sometimes they do Today we are joined by Harry Kendall, who is a decathlete and may well, is probably best known for competing for Team England last year in Birmingham at the Commonwealth Games. Uh, currently ranked third this year in decathlon. And he had a great year last year, but he's also not doing too badly this year. He had a great season opener in Greece and he competed at the England Athletic Senior Championships and he's here with us today. So I was wondering, so... If online sources are to be believed, me and you are of a similar age, only a few months apart. So yeah. growing up, I don't know if, I don't know what it was like for you, but for me personally, London 2012 was a massive thing for me. You know, that was what really put athletics to the forefront for me. But for you personally, what was it for you growing up where whether it was a moment in your athletics or something you saw on the TV where you thought to yourself, I want to take my athletics further. What was it for you that um, kickstarted that for you? So I've just always, I've always loved athletics um, because I was a very hyperactive child. I just used to love running around. Um, my earliest memory of athletics that I can vividly remember would be Kelly Holmes at Athens 2004. Okay. Um, I was on holiday in France. I think I've been in, near Bordeaux. And I just remember sitting in the, the living room in our, uh, house just watching on the TV Kelly Holmes win 800 and 1500 meter gold at Athens um, and then post that I remember watching pretty much every every championships that went on there was um, Justin Gatlin winning the 100 meters in the next world championships in 2005 which obviously didn't work out too well for him um, and then there was Beijing 2008 obviously had Bolt win the 100 200 break the world record and then the year after in Berlin do the same again um so i'd say probably kelly holmes 2004 and then bolt 2008 2009 um all of that was just phenomenal and i don't think i really started following the decathlon until probably around london 2012 when ashton eaton won um mm. i think ashton eaton was probably my earliest sort of hero in the decathlon he just seemed to make everything look incredibly easy yeah, yeah. I mean, like I say, London 2012 was such a massive thing for us over here. And yeah, I mean, we both would have been teenagers at that point. So obviously for you growing up, that must have been such a big thing for you to look at and think, you know what, actually, if these athletes can do it, then why can't you? And um, yeah, obviously, then you eventually went on to the Commonwealth Games. We can't we can't not talk about that. So tell me a bit about your journey leading up from being that hyperactive child to then ending up going to the Commonwealth Games, what was that process like? Um, it was a long one. It was a very long process. Um, my thought process has always been if I stick at something for long enough, I'll eventually get where I want to be, regardless of how long it takes. Um, and I'm quite lucky in the decathlon is that my like, decathletes have quite a long lifespan in the sport. I think a lot of them don't peak until they're sort of mid-30s. You've got Damian Warner still winning world champ silvers and I think he's 33 or 34 now um but from a young age like um around the time of the Beijing Olympics I was sort of 12-ish um I was ranked number one in the country for a bit in the high jump when I was a, a young boy and then sort of athletics stepped to the side a little bit um in my mid-teens just because I was playing a lot of rugby I was playing a lot of tennis 
and some other sports sort of took over and I took it back up again when I was sort of 16. Um, went to the English schools uh, for the octathlon, performed terribly, came like 24th, I think. Um, and then English schools for decathlon in the under 20s, both years, again, performed pretty terribly, I think. My final year, I think I finished sixth, which was okay, but my first year in the under 20s, it must have been way down. Um, so I was definitely not a, a child prodigy in the decathlon. And then after that, went off to university, uh, basically trained full time for three years, which definitely helped. Um, ended up breaking 7,000 points in my second year of university. And then came back, COVID hit, which didn't help. Um, and then just just kept plugging away with it, really. Um, and then coming into the last year, 2022, I came out of that indoor season feeling like I was in really, really good shape. Um, mm -hmm. had a really successful training camp in Portugal, came back did a decathlon in Bedford and then just everything in that decathlon just went pretty perfectly, to be honest. There's only a couple of minor gripes I could have with that performance. Um, I think my long jump was a bit down, but I think I got seven PBs overall, so I can't really complain. Um, and then, yeah, I got the qualifying standard there. And then, yeah, I guess just that was pretty phenomenal. So did you ever like fully believe that you would get to where you are today did you ever think you'd be doing the commonwealth games and going to places like greece and all those kind of places did you ever think you'd get to this stage now did you ever have that self-belief i did but not over not in a deluded sort of way but like okay. i remember the competition at bedford last year i didn't actually think i was going to qualify for the commonwealth games until probably after the shot put um because i've thrown pretty no, actually probably after the high jump i think because i've thrown a pretty massive pb in the shot and done my best high jump in a couple of years and i thought oh it's on now so i'm gonna have to pull it out um but i remember lying in bed the night before the competition going running through the comp of my head going there's no way i could possibly score the qualifying standard um i think the qualifying standard was seven seven fifty and i scored seven eight four three so i was nearly up about 90 95 points over it um i just remember lying in bed going there's absolutely no chance um because my pb at the time was only 7300 um and there was no way i could put the figures together in my head to for it to come out as me qualifying even though that had been my goal for the whole winter um and then after the high jump i just thought oh, actually i'm in in the hunt now so i've just got to keep it going okay so yeah, it's because obviously you did the Commonwealth Games. You did it in Birmingham, so you had the home crowd right behind you the whole time you were there. What was that like for you to step out onto that track and to hear that that crowd just screaming for you and just supporting you the whole way? That must have been electrifying for you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I remember being I was a little nervous before the hundred meters, and then as soon as I stepped out onto the track. And I heard the noise. It all just sort of melted away, um, which you couldn't tell from my 100 because it was really slow. Um, but I think there were other factors coming into play there. Um, but yeah, I, the the noise and the the support from the crowd just made the whole experience what it was. Um, I can't imagine what the athletes sort of the year before in Tokyo were like when they were competing in an empty stadium because of COVID. Um, yeah. Like the experience must have just been massively dampened from that uh, because in Birmingham, not even Olympics or a world champs, just it was ridiculous the amount of support that all the all the athletes would get, not even just um the English ones. They just the crowd were going mad just for the athletics. Yeah, I think from what I gathered anyway, when the Commonwealth Games happened, there did seem to be just this massive response. I don't know if it's because it was happening here in the UK or if it was because we were just coming out of COVID. I don't know what it was, but for that championship especially from what i noticed people just seem to be going crazy over it so for you to actually compete at that championship and have that experience of the crowd being fully behind you that must be something that will stay with you for well the rest of your life really oh yeah absolutely it's never it's going to be a, something i never ever forget hopefully um yeah it'll be uh still in, still ingrained in my head pretty pretty well there um I can remember just very specific moments about everything. Um, the pole vault obviously was a highlight. Um, the javelin as well. Everything through day two, to be honest, except for the hurdles, which was diabolical. Um, 
but everything yeah everything through the second day was just like a like a fever dream it was just i was almost delirious with what was happening um yeah i'll definitely never forget it and hopefully get to experience it again soon i think the uh the european champs are in birmingham in 2026 so it'd be nice to go out there and uh, experience the home crowd again definitely and I'm sure you won't forget the injury you picked up a few weeks before the Commonwealth Games either. What what was that like to pick up that injury and then have to... How did you overcome that? Because obviously you sprained your ankle a few weeks before the Games have happened. For something of that scale, how, how, do you, how do you get your head in the game knowing that you've got to deal with this, yet you've still got to deal with, obviously, the other prep for the championships as well? How did you go about preparing for it? Yeah, so... Um... It was around six or seven weeks beforehand. I was just doing a regular pole vault session, ran through onto the bed, got my spike caught on the mat and dislocated my ankle. Um, so a couple of the ligaments on it got ripped apart there. And then luckily I, it went straight back in. Um, so I didn't have to wait around with my ankle out the socket. Um, but that was a pretty, that was a low moment sitting in A&E that night for sort of six or seven hours waiting for results of a scan that were still to this day, I think, pretty inconclusive. Um, I knew it had dislocated and it was double the size it should have been. Um, but after that, I had people coming up to me telling me, don't don't say anything to England Athletics, don't say anything to to the, the powers that be, um, because they'll pull you out of the thing, and I, the Commonwealth Games. And I was thinking about it and I thought, no, I'm going to let them know. Um, so I rang up Ray for Joseph, my um, sort of liaison for the Games and the person who'd be coaching me. And he said, right, let's just get on this. We're going to put you a scan in, in London the next day. So I went up to Wimbledon, got a scan, uh, an MRI. Um, and then that results of that came back. They said, OK, can you... Uh, it was the, what was it, the British champs that weekend. And all the physios were up in Manchester. And I'm based down in Sussex. And I remember getting a call on the Saturday night going like, can you get to Manchester tomorrow? And I thought, I'm not really... I'm in a boot and on crutches. And they were like, oh, we need to see you in Manchester because all the physios are here, so we need to assess you. And so I had to book a flight um, on Saturday night for Sunday morning, uh, flying out of Gatwick to Manchester. Went up there, got a load of physios prodding me, twisting me about. Um, came back, they set me up with sort of a, a plan, uh, a physio plan, and then ended up moving to Loughborough for two weeks so they could treat me up there as well. Came back from that. This is prob after I came back from Loughborough, it's probably about three and a half to four weeks into me having done it um was just about able to run at this point but slowly but still progressed and then after that it picked up quite a lot I was integrating myself back into field events um and then running and I said when when it happened I said to Kelly Southerton if I don't think I can compete I'll pull myself out of this because I don't want to go there on one leg and perform badly and put on a bad show for everyone and so it was uh really up to me what I was going to do and then by the sort of uh, by the time the holding camp rolled around, I was able to do every event, and I thought, okay, I'm going to give this a go because I feel like I'm still in good shape because I was in really good shape before I got injured anyway, and it only been sort of four or five weeks. Um, yeah, and then by the time the the competition rolled around, I felt like I was in really good shape. I was just strapping up my ankle. Um, obviously, I hadn't been able to do too much of every event, but I'd done enough so that I felt like I could perform well. And ended up with my second best ever score, um, which was which is not bad under the circumstances. Uh, and then, yeah, it was just, it was tough. But I'm glad I managed to push myself through it and and finish the decathlon in the end. Yeah, because that must have made it all the more satisfying, I suppose, as well. Once you actually finish the championships, knowing that you had to go through that journey to get to where you are at that point. That must have really like made it something just that little bit more special for you as well when you when you'd come out of Birmingham and you'd finished it all. So yeah, totally. And also, I mean, there's there does seem to be a lot of athletes that we've worked with this year who picked up an injury in some form where they've had to either miss the indoor season or they've had to cancel their championships altogether. And a lot of these are young athletes as well, like 14, 15 that we've worked with and They've been really devastated by it, which obviously at that young age, that is, you know, it's 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 heartbreaking because you have your heart set on yeah, you have your heart set on an event, and then for something like that to just wipe you out completely, essentially, it must be tough. So um, but yeah, no, for you to 
overcome that and then do what you did it's just incredible I mean so tell us about your season this year as well because obviously that was last year um and this year you've had a few events going on um have you felt any pressure to um to build on what you did at the Commonwealth Games um so yeah I start I started this season um so after the Commonwealth Games I ended my season last year didn't do anything and then set about trying to treat my ankle that was still quite bad um so I was in a boot for a while um and then just ended up sort of must have been November till Jan end of January just pretty much rehabbing my ankle trying to get that right then integrating myself back into some sort of harder training um I did the British indoor champs in February just to do a competition um because if I hadn't have done that I would have been from the Commonwealth Games till May where I hadn't competed at all and so I just decided to do the British Indoor Champs, uh, compete there. Obviously went pretty terribly, to be honest. Um, nothing nothing went spectacularly well, so I hadn't done much training. Um, and then after that, I was feeling in a much better place to go into the outdoors and actually uh, compete. So we went off to Portugal for two weeks uh, for a training camp, which that really set me up nicely for the season. Um, and then a couple of weeks after that, went off to Greece for my first competition. Uh, day one there went really well day two was um i felt the lack of technical training i'd done uh on day two because obviously day two is where where the decathlon won and lost and it's a very technical day whereas day one's just for the the power athletes um we've had a few issues at our home track this year um because it's based in a school and uh they were using the infield as a football pitch so we weren't allowed to throw onto it so we didn't actually manage to get any discus or javelin training in until sort of the end of april um, which was a bit tough. So we were rushing to get those technical bits in. And where we don't have an indoor facility either, um, it's quite difficult for us to pole vault through the winter. So we normally travel up to Lee Valley and whatnot. But I've I've managed to set myself my own goals this year. Um, I haven't met as many of them as I'd have liked. My main one was to get over 8,000 points in the decathlon, um, which I was very confident. I've still been very confident of the whole year and still feel like I could do with a good competition but I just don't think it was the the season for me to do it, it wasn't wasn't out there um I had some tough conditions in my last decathlon it was a little bit windy uh but again I just went into that not in the 100 percent of the right shape to to perform I can't make excuses for it it's just sometimes um the competitions don't go your way and sometimes they do I had a couple of competitions go perfectly last year I had a couple not go so well this year um it's just just one of those things really yeah it can be so unpredictable at times can't it because obviously you can think to yourself sometimes that you're going to smash this competition and you're going to do this and you're going to do that but then actually when it comes to it yeah so it, it just doesn't go the way you want it to sometimes and um yeah like preparing for that what if I think that is key for a lot of people as well so um but yeah I mean you've you've been to quite a few places this year I mean this year's been a good one for you as well so um, happy days, happy days. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's not been bad. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, how do you balance um, training as a high level athlete with your with your life? Like, how, how do you yeah how do you go about training for your competitions and then balancing that with other commitments or you know whatever else might be going on in your life? Yeah, it's been tough. Um, so. I basically put the rest of my life on hold to do athletics. Um, I was, I'm that in the next year, I'm going to work on getting a more full time job. Um, so I was working in a school just as a sports coach and a games coach and a PE uh, coach. And that was the last season in the 2022 season. And then I left that in September and decided to work on trying to pick up a few sponsors and then try and go full time as an athlete. And I managed to pick up a few sponsors in the last year, but still not enough to make it economically viable for me to not do anything else. Um, so, yeah, still still out looking for sponsors, which is the main thing. And then I work part time in a gym as well. And I work uh, coaching athletics for West Kent Athletics Club, which um, my training partner, Lewis Church, has set up. I don't know if you saw anything on our social medias about our pro league things where we do. We coach um, all the kids there and we do weekly sessions with that um, I think we're going to expand that and uh 
put more sessions on and I'll start working there a little bit more full time in the next year. Um, but obviously, the dream is to pick up pick up sponsors and become a full time athlete. Um, it's the the monetary, the economic side of it is the uh, the tricky part because obviously the Cathal is not a cheap event and it takes up a lot of my time. So working a full time job and then going to a three or four hour training session whilst a lot of people do it um i just think i would struggle doing doing that much stuff in one day uh so all the sponsors i have now they're local businesses so there's a property developers there's an accountants there's a financial advisors and they all just sort of contribute monthly to my to my training um just with bits of cash and whatever um which i was massively appreciated um and any more of those would be would be great yeah so yeah it's tough i can totally see that and if anything that can be a call to action for this interview is to get people to sponsor you we need to find these sponsors <laughs> i don't know where we're going to get them from but we need to find them for you. we need to get them that's the call to action yeah <laughs> that's the dream um, it, it is it is because it, like you say it's it's uh, athletics is just a really tricky one where funding is concerned because it can be so tricky to um get the funding in for athletes because obviously for things like football and rugby where it gets the spotlight and it gets the funding it's you know it's, it's not as hard but for athletics where I, I think we're still like on an upward rise with athletics i don't think we're quite fully there yet but slowly but surely i think we are getting yeah. there so um yeah so fingers crossed you well yeah fingers crossed you get that funding soon yeah um, yeah hopefully yeah, fingers crossed for you. Um, and finally, then, in these last few minutes I have with you, um, so looking back now on how you were as a kid, you described yourself as a hyperactive child earlier. Mm. What would you, if you could say anything to that child now, um, if you could advise that kid anything on how the next few years are going to go, what would you say to your younger self, or what would you advise your younger self for the years that would um be ahead of you i would just say to myself or to any any child just keep at it because you get a lot of i think i was quite a naturally talented child sort of primary school age i don't think i lost a race till i was about 12 um i went like winning sports days district sports county sports whatever um but i think yeah you've just got to stick at it like regardless of how naturally talented you are you've still got to work and you don't have to work as hard when you're younger as you do when you're older. Um, but just keep keep at it, keep going. Um, say thank you to your parents because they're going to be driving you around everywhere. Um, you can't drive yourself around when you're 11. Um, so yeah, make sure you yeah appreciate appreciate what everyone's doing for you. Um, and as you get a bit older, I would say make sure you've got a good team around you. Um, so I think something that I've only learned way too late in my career is that there's no no substitute for having a good coach a good training group and then having a reliable physio or a sports massage therapist to go to um or even like if you need a sports psychologist go find one of those um i haven't used any myself but i've definitely been uh considering it because i think a lot of the time it's just nice to talk talk things through with people um if, even if that's a coach or a training partner uh, or anyone in your training group. Um, yeah, my my only bit of advice really would be to just keep at it. Just put in the time and you'll reap the rewards eventually. For sure, for sure. Yeah, because uh, a lot of the athletes we work with are, you know, in the grassroots and they're, they're very young. So we do try and um, – get advice from people like yourselves or you know people that have been in their shoes basically to let them know that there will be challenges there will be uphill battles but if you can mentally get in the game if you can get that supportive network around you like you say then I mean things can only go up from there so yeah no that was um yeah, yeah that was um really interesting to hear so um but yeah no Harry I want to thank you for um taking the time to talk with us today and um Good luck with your upcoming competitions. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks yeah, my so pleasure. Much.